Hello, welcome, thank you so much for being here. Today I'm walking you through step-by-step -step making this adorable children's pinafore apron. There is a beautiful adult pinafore apron tutorial on YouTube by Willows and Wisteria. I'll link it down below. And this tutorial follows many of her steps, except I added a ruffle along the bottom and I sized the measurements for children. So at the end of this tutorial, we will have sewn a 2T to 4T size pinafore apron. We are beginning with cutting out our six pattern pieces. Before you do this, make sure to wash your fabric and then iron it flat for best results. You'll need two bib pieces measuring six by five inches two strap pieces measuring 15 and a half by four inches, one waistband slash tie measuring 50 by four inches, one skirt piece measuring 31 by 11 inches, and one ruffle piece measuring 46 by four inches. These measurements already have seam allowance added into them. Once we've cut out our fabric, we're ironing our strap and waistband pieces. Taking your two strap pieces one at a time, Fold them in half lengthwise and iron. Open the piece back up and fold the edges into that middle ironed seam. Iron again. Then fold the iron fabric back in half along that first pressed seam. You should have folded the fabric so that there are four layers in that strap. We are going to repeat that same technique for the second strap and the waistband. However, for the waistband, after we've folded the edges of the fabric into that first pressed seam down the middle of the fabric, we are dog earing the four corners of the fabric and pressing them. So once we fold the fabric back down that first iron seam, we will have a nice slanted edge. Here we have all of our pattern pieces cut and ironed and ready for sewing. We'll begin with our two strap pieces, sewing a straight stitch down the long open edge a quarter of an inch from the edge. Repeat this down the folded side as well. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of your sewing. Next, take your two bib pieces and face them right sides together. Remove the top bib layer, keeping it face down, and line up the skinny raw edges of your straps with the top edge of your bib layer, which is face up. This should be placed 3 eighths of an inch from the left and right sides of your fabric. Your strap should point down toward you, resting on the face up fabric of your bib. Place the bib fabric you set aside earlier, which is still face down, on top of your straps and line it perfectly with the bottom bib fabric. Pin bib pieces together along the top, making sure to pin through the straps. Then pin just the bib pieces together along the left and right sides. This will leave an opening along the bottom of the bib that your straps should be poking through. Sew along the pinned edges a quarter of an inch from the edge, then turn sewn fabric right side out and press. When you turn the corners on this bib piece, make sure your needle is down in the fabric. Then gently release the presser foot, turn the fabric you're working with to follow your pin line, and continue sewing. There is no need to backstitch at these turned corners since you're sewing continuously. Next, we're taking our skirt fabric and pinning a quarter of an inch rolled hem on only the left and right sides of the fabric. Then sew. If you don't wish to add a ruffle to the skirt, then you should do this quarter inch rolled hem along the bottom edge as well.
Once we've hemmed the sides of the skirt, we'll take our ruffle piece and continue our quarter inch hem along the left and right sides of the fabric, this time also hemming the bottom edge as well. Then sew. Now why did I jump to the ruffle piece when I haven't finished with the skirt section? We'll be changing our stitch length and tension soon to execute the gathering stitch along the top edges of both the skirt and the ruffle pieces. So I like to do as much as I can before messing around with my stitch length and tension so that I'm not bouncing back and forth with it. To create a basic gather stitch, increase the stitch length on your machine as long as it will go, while increasing the tension on your machine as well. This will begin gathering the fabric as you sew. For this tutorial, I decreased the tension on my machine instead of increasing it so that my pieces would lay flat as I sewed them. This made it easier for me to assemble them. And since we're making this apron for a child, it's not much work to gather the sections by hand. So we are taking our skirt fabric and ruffle piece and sewing a gather stitch across the top unfinished edges of the fabric about half an inch from the edge. Make sure not to backstitch and to leave long tails at the beginning and the end of your work that we'll use to gather the fabric by hand. It's typically recommended to sew two parallel gather stitches in case one set breaks as you're hand gathering. However, full transparency, I must confess that I've always done only one line of gathering stitches and it's never snapped on me. I'm sure there will be a day when I regret not doing two lines of stitching, but I probably won't change anything until that day happens. Lay your skirt fabric flat on the table, right side up with the bottom edge facing you. Take your ruffle section and hand gather the top edge by gently pulling on either the front or back thread and shimmying the fabric along that gather stitch. Continue to gather your ruffle until it matches the width of your skirt piece, making sure to evenly space your gathers. Place your ruffle piece face down on top of your skirt fabric so the pieces are right sides together. Pin the bottom edge of your skirt to the top gathered edge of your ruffle and sew a quarter inch from the edge. As you sew, make sure you don't sew over the gather stitch because we will be taking it out later. Make sure to return your machine to the proper stitch length and tension for a straight stitch. I like to sew a brief line on a scrap of fabric to make sure my tension is correct before I sew on my project. Before we continue our work on the skirt piece, we need to take our waistband and find the midpoint, marking it with a pin or erasable ink. Place another pin 8 inches to both the right and left of the middle pin for a total of 16 inches between the outside pins. Moving back to the skirt piece, gather the top edge of your skirt until it matches the length between the pins on your waistband, which is that 16 inches. Open up your waistband piece, keeping that 16 inches marked, and pin your skirt to the bottom of the waistband, making sure the right side of your skirt is facing up.
Then fold the top of the waistband down and pin all three layers together. As you pin your skirt to the waistband, make sure you don't cover the gather stitch since we will be removing it later. Start sealing the waistband, beginning at the left pointed edge of the waistband, which will become a tie. Sew about 1 8 to 1 quarter inch from the edge. As you sew along the bottom edge of the waistband, you'll catch the top of the skirt between the two layers of the waistband. Continue sewing that skirt section all the way to the other slanted edge, making sure to backstitch. Here is what the finished skirt portion looks like, and honestly, it would make a super cute half apron in its own right. I'm trying to show you the flow of the skirt as I hold it with the gathers and the ruffle piece. So cute! Once you've finished attaching the skirt to the waistband, you can remove that gathering stitch on the ruffle and skirt pieces. Take your bib and straps fabric, rolling in the bottom unfinished edge of the bib inside of itself a quarter of an inch and pinning it. Making sure your bib is right side up, mark the midpoint of it. Attach the waistband over the bib material by a quarter of an inch, lining up the midpoints on each piece. Pin the garment in place, making sure to pin through the waistband and both bib and lining. Similar to attaching the skirt to the waistband, we'll start sewing along the top edge of the waistband, right at the point of the tie. As we sew along the top edge, we should catch the unfinished ends of the bib piece and successfully attach the skirt portion to the bib. You'll see here that I did not completely catch the unfinished ends of my bib piece as I attached it to the waistband. If this happens to you, it's an easy fix. Just fold your apron along the line you just sewed, retuck any unfinished edges, and sew an eighth of an inch from the edge, making sure you're only sewing on the bib and lining fabric. We're almost there! 
All we have left to do is attach the straps, crossing them in the back and sewing them to the waistband. Now, what I'm going to voice over is slightly different than what is shown in this video. I realized that I made attaching the straps a bit harder for myself than it needed to be, so hopefully this voice over simplifies it for you guys. Lay your apron flat with the wrong side face up. Take your strap pieces and measure 14 and a half inches along your straps from their attachment at the bib. Mark it. Taking the right strap, cross it behind the bib lining to attach it to the left side of the waistband where the skirt meets the waistband. Then take the left strap, cross it behind the bib lining to attach it to the right side of the waistband where the skirt meets the waistband. As you pin each strap, make sure the straps slant inwards, like the forward and back slash symbols, so that they make a seamless X across the back. Since your apron is already wrong side up, just pin the straps on top of the waistband, making sure to tuck in the loose end of the strap so that the machine catches it with stitches as you sew. Before you sew the straps on, hang the apron by the top of the straps to make sure the straps lay flat and aren't twisted. Then attach the straps and you've done it. You've made an absolutely adorable children's pinafore apron. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time.